Let's shed some light on my newest project, and if you're not on my wavelength, it's okay. I'll be curing your worries. We've got another DIY box build, and if you're thinking I'm gonna make box puns, I've put a lid on that. I mean, I wouldn't want to box anyone out or anything, right? Now, I'm definitely not the first person to come up with this, but I think that I've found a way that makes this whole thing easy to make and for 25 bucks or less and in under 10 minutes. I learned how to do this from Jory Block and just adjusted it for my own needs. Now, we're making a tool here, which is a bit different than our normal DIY videos. A lot of people like to use these spinny tables. I found this nice UV-powered spinning table, which of course is great, because in a UV curing station, we're gonna have UV. Shining UV lights on this thing makes it spin around without any batteries, which is amazing, and I found this 24 watt set of LED UV strips, which is fantastic, because that combination is like dark magic. That thing will spin on its own, and it only needs one plug, which is phenomenal. I'm gonna put it in this little $7 Hallmark gift box. You could absolutely just use an Amazon box, it would be just fine, and I'm also gonna use these little mirrored reflective sticky things. You could use aluminum foil. You could do the whole thing for 25 bucks. What I use cost me about 55 bucks, but I wanted it to sit on my shelf and I wanted it to kind of be aesthetically pleasing both for the video and for me to look at. So don't necessarily follow this. Use this as a guideline rather than an exact template. It comes with some of these little fluffy things which I don't really need. The box in itself folds out nice and neat and it has a lot of surface area to play with as far as putting the LED strips and the mirrored surfaces on there. The whole box is made out of some thin cardboard which I thought was important for what I wanted to do which is another reason I didn't just go with straight Amazon. It's kind of corrugated cardboard which I don't like. Now we're gonna go ahead and put these mirrored sticky surfaces right on to the inside of the box. Box. We want a lot of the UV light that's in there to bounce around. You can peel off the back and it sticks. You can see here, I did not get it centered the first time. That's okay, it'll come off, but I wouldn't mess up too many times. The cardboard is not exactly super strong, so it <laughs> definitely has a chance to rip with how sticky the back of these things are. I just take some scissors and trim off the top, and we're going to use that trimmed piece for some extra reflectivity here in just a moment. You can use this extra reflectivity sheet to save on some Skrilla, some money, you know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> you can take this extra strip and put it on the bottom. Because we're going to have that turntable right in the center, we don't need reflectivity all the way on the bottom. So this stuff that we were going to cut off and use anyway, we can use to save some extra money. Tape up any of the parts that are kind of moving now that you don't like because it's a good time to do so, and cut off the tops and glue on the reflective sticky papers on the rest of the sides. However, don't overlap these extra pieces yet because once we stick these things down, they actually have a protective film on them. We want to be able to peel that off. And if you were to set those extra strips on the two strips that are already down on the bottom, you wouldn't be able to see. You can see after taking the film up, it is much more of a mirror-like surface than it was before. The paper on there is great for keeping it safe, but now we almost have a fun house full of mirrors for how shiny this stuff is. So it's phenomenal. It does not need to be this shiny. Again, the shiny side of aluminum foil will do great. Just do some spray adhesive or some double-sided tape or even some super glue, whatever you can do to get that aluminum foil to stick and cover most of the surface on the interior. You can see I'm not covering all of it, and that's okay. It's plenty shiny. You can see I can see my camera. You can see I can see, but it doesn't need to be that much. Just enough to bounce some of the UV light around. You can see we can take our little UV turntable and set it in the center of the platform with not much in the way of losing reflectivity. It's time to take this here UV strip and stick it to the bottom. Luckily, it has sticky tape on the other side of it, so that makes our life far, far easier than if it hadn't, and it connects right into one single cord. So because I want to be able to close this, because I don't want to see the UV light, because that's bad for your eyes, I'm going to take my knife, again, a reason we don't want to use corrugated cardboard here, and cut a small little slot for my plug to come out of. This is enough for me, and it's covered enough for the box for me to be comfy. I can plug that other end into the wall, and I'm good to go. The sticky sides here will stick right to the reflective surface. It's okay if we cover some of it up. Again, it's not really a huge deal to have this reflective surface. We're gonna have so many lights in there. However, why not do it? You can ensure you have a good cure every time. The other thing is, this stuff is not supposed to bend. You don't want to bend these UV strips. They could cause it to break or things to catch fire, and we don't want that. So make sure when you're putting it on these curves like I'm doing here and going around the outside of the box, give it kind of a gentle slope on the corners there. It makes life a lot easier. And at the end, I just turn it and glue the remaining bit towards the end right on the top of the lid. You can see my dumb face there before I cut off the little wires with some scissors. 
the box is technically done, but there's more that we can do to it. So the box here is fine and dandy. It's all ready and well good to go. You don't even need to do the top bit of lights on the lid of the box, but that's just, again, extra safety. So I'm going to take this plug. It's got a little on off switch here, which is great. I don't even have to open the box and see the UV, plug it in. And wow, look at all that nice purple shiny UV goodness. And you can see me waving to you there in the camera because it's just so reflective and just so shiny. The UV turntable immediately starts turning as soon as it has some light on it. It even turns without just direct UV light. It's that sensitive, which is great. And for like 10 bucks, I couldn't ask for anything better. It shines and it turns around, which is all great. But if you get that plate dirty, it's going to look real bad. So there's a better solution to that. For the clear plate, there is a way to get both more reflectivity and not have to worry about cleaning. I take some aluminum foil, which again, you could use on the inside of the box in place of my mirror shine and wrap it around. Now, if it gets dirty, the worst thing you have to do is put some more aluminum foil on it. It also will help reflect light, which will help your part cure faster. All around, I think it's a way better way to go than just letting the turntable sit there. This is great for curing figures. It's great for curing dice that have come off of your resin printer. You can also put your dice in their molds if you like using UV cured dice and molds and cure them right in this box and it will look phenomenal. Also, I just kind of had to show here because it looks really cool when you have darkness or just a little light and you turn on UV light, the camera has to focus itself. It looks like those are being transported in in Star Trek or just suddenly materializing and I just thought that was a cool shot. This holds quite a lot. I can cure maybe about eight things in here at a time, eight minis at least, and then I just pop the lid on the box and it's done in maybe five minutes rather than the few hours that it takes for these things to sit out in the sun. And you can get back to priming, painting, and finishing your minis rather than having to wait for good sunlight to be able to do things. It was really cloudy over here the past few weeks. I'd, take, I'd show you a shot, but suddenly it was sunny today, so I couldn't actually get a good shot of that. But now I don't have to worry about that because I've got my own little curing station. And because of that, I can continue to make dice without having to worry about the weather and without having to worry about going outside during a pandemic. That's also pretty nice. Thank you so much to the patrons that help support this channel. But if maybe DIY boxes aren't your thing, maybe you're more of a straight dice maker or a straight dice goblin, then that's okay because we have Dice Goblin merchandise finally. I have had this actually ready for two weeks through Teespring, but I wanted to actually try this stuff and make sure that it was decent quality for myself before I said it was okay and I, I still didn't get a good shot here. I was trying to line it up, but either way, it's hard to show off all three of these things at once. We got a bunch of different logos, a bunch of different designs, and there were even some that I didn't like the quality of, and so we took those off the store. I tried them and I just didn't want you all to buy something and be dissatisfied with it. So all the products on there I like and I've tried and I think they look good. I like this giant praise the dice shirt, but my wife said she wouldn't wear a shirt unless it was just one of the ones up in the corner. So we got other designs like the official Dice Goblin shirt, which has a Dice Goblin right up near the pocket. We even have it in maroon for all you Aggie official Dice Goblins. Whoop, just saying. Now, I know with COVID going around, money is tight, and I 100% understand that. Y you should absolutely prioritize yourself over my merchandise. That's stupid. So definitely prioritize yourself. But if you want to buy it, it's there. And Patreons, depending on what level they support, might get 10% or 20% off the merchandise. So I wanted to make sure that they had this because they paid money for this, and they should get that discount. So this exists. Now, if you're not completely sold or satisfied with it, don't worry. I do actually have a second case use for this stuff. So since toilet paper is a commodity and this stuff gets delivered right to your door, I double checked. It is about seven little squares of toilet paper long, which means it's about a hundred squares of toilet paper worth of t-shirt if you hate my channel. And you know, you should save your toilet paper. It's like gold right now. And this is the worst joke I've ever said. Let's just go ahead and end the video. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you want to see more or for using this UV curing station. If you want to learn how to make your own custom dice, I got free files for you so that you can make your own. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you have a fantastic day and everybody please stay safe out there.